Hello everyone, this is Nomadic here. Today let's learn about the concept of air consumption and required air volume of a pneumatic cylinder. Generally, the air consumption of a pneumatic cylinder is used to calculate the selection of an air compressor, and the required air volume is used as a flow rate index value for selecting F, filter, R, regulator, L, lubricator, or pressure booster valve. The story of pneumatic cylinders air consumption and required air volume. Let's begin. The pneumatic cylinders air consumption is literally a number that indicates how much compressed air is used when the pneumatic cylinder is in motion. Generally, it refers to the amount of compressed air consumed when the pneumatic cylinder moves once. The amount of air consumed by these pneumatic cylinders is a figure used to select an air compressor and air tank. Here, an air compressor means a machine that absorbs air in the atmosphere to produce compressed air and supplies these air to pneumatic devices such as cylinders. Air compressor absorbs the air and produces the compressed air and this compressed air is kept in the air tank so that it can be supplied to the pneumatic devices like cylinders when it's needed. However, if you choose an air compressor and an air tank, which has lower volume compared to the amount of compressed air which cylinder uses, the cylinder will not work properly. Also, if you choose an air compressor and an air tank which is much bigger compared to the amount of compressed air which cylinder uses, the maintenance and management may be difficult due to the large installation area. Therefore, if you know the amount of the compressed air that your pneumatic cylinder uses, it will be helpful to choose the right air compressor and an air tank which suits with your working condition. It is recommended to choose an air compressor type that is about 40% larger than the actual air consumption used during the process, considering the leakage loss of pipes or valve. Now, let's look at the cylinder's air consumption again by looking at the reciprocating motion of a double-acting cylinder. The compressed air flows into the pipe when the piston of the cylinder moves forward and compressed air is consumed in the pipe connected to the cylinder and consumed inside of the cylinder. Also, the compressed air flows when the piston moves backward and the compressed air is consumed in the pipe connected to the cylinder and consumed inside of the cylinder just like when the piston is moving forward. Therefore, we have to separate for different situations when it comes to the pneumatic cylinder's consumption of the compressed air the consumption of the compressed air in the cylinder and the pipe when it's moving forward and when it's moving backward. The formula to calculate the amount of the air consumption based on each situation is shown on the screen. If you analyze the area where the compressed air acts inside the cylinder and the actual moving distance of the compressed air and same with the pipe and apply these numbers to the formula, you can figure out the air consumption in the cylinder and in the pipe. If you add all, it will be the amount of air consumption when the cylinder moves once. Let's use the KCC's General Double Type ACM cylinder as an example to calculate the air consumption. The ACM cylinder here has 50 millimeters of tabinner diameter, 20 millimeters of rod diameter, 100 millimeters of cylinder stroke, and for convenience of calculation, let's assume that the 8 millimeters inside diameter and 2 meters of nylon tube is identically installed in both forward and reverse directions. Also, let's assume that the pressure is 0, 0.5 MPa. First, let's look at the cylinder moving forward. Inside the cylinder, the compressed air acts on the entire cross-sectional piston area, and since the cross-sectional area of the piston is circular, the area can be calculated through the formula for bore diameter and circle area. Also, the actual distance that compressed air moves is same as the length of cylinder stroke, 100 millimeters. Now, if you look at the connected pipe, the cross-sectional area is also circular, so we can use the circle area formula with using the 8 millimeters of inside diameter of the pipe to calculate the actual distance. 
The distance that compressed air move is same as the length of the pipe to meters. Last, the pressure is zero. 5 megapascal so, if we put all figures into the formula. The amount of the air used when the cylinder moves forward is approximately 1.18 liter and the amount used in the pipe is 0. 6 liter. Next, let's look at the cylinder moving backward. The compressed air inside, the cylinder acts on the section, excluding the rids cross-section area, from the piston's cross-section area. And since both the piston and rod cross-sectional area are circular, we can figure out the actual cross-sectional area that the compressed air acts through the formula for tubinor diameter, rod diameter, and circle area formulas. Also, the distance that compressed air moves is same as when the cylinder is moving forward and same as the length of the cylinder stroke, 100 millimeters. When we input all these numbers into the formula shown on the screen, the amount of air used in the cylinder is 0, 0.99 liter and 0, 0.6 liter in the pipe. Since we assumed that the amount of air used in the pipe to be same when cylinder is moving forward for the convenience of calculation, if we add all up, we can figure out the amount of the air consumed when cylinder moves once and for this example's result. The double acting cylinder's air consumption is 3.37 liter. So what is the required air amount of the pneumatic cylinder? The required air amount of a pneumatic cylinder represents the amount of compressed air that the cylinder uses per unit R and used as a flow rate index value for choosing the model size of air unit and pressure boosting valve. The flow rate means that the amount of fluid passing through a certain cross-sectional area per unit hour the amount of fluid passing increases as the cross-sectional area increases since there are more space for the air to flow. If the flow rate is bigger than the amount which air unit can handle, the pneumatic system cannot work properly. In this case, we must change the air unit to the bigger size. So, if you know the required air amount helps to choose the proper air unit, or valves for your work. The double acting cylinders required air amount can be divided into when the cylinder is moving forward and backward and the formulas for each is shown on the screen. If you look at the formula, the consumption of the air we calculated before can be used for the calculation of required air amount when cylinder is moving forward and backward and whichever is bigger will be the required air amount of the pneumatic cylinder. For example, we can use the previous example, we used 50 mm of tubinor diameter, 20 mm of rod diameter, 100 mm of ACM cylinder stroke, and the 8 mm inside diameter, and 2 meters of nylon tube is identically installed in both forward and reverse directions, with a pressure of 0, 5 megapascals, and we assume that the required time when the cylinder is moving forward and backward is 0, 5 sec. If we put the calculated numbers to the formula, the 1.18 liter of air consumption when moving forward, the 0, 6 liter in the pipe, and the 0, 5 sec for the required time, the cylinder's required amount of air when moving forward is 213.6 liter per minute. Also, for the cylinder moving backwards, we can put the numbers in the formula. The 0, 99 liter of air consumption when moving backward, the 0, 6 liter in the pipe, and the 0, 5 sec for the required time. The cylinder's required amount of air when moving backward is 190.8 liter per minute. Now, since the bigger result will be the cylinder's required air amount so theoretically, the required air amount will be 213.6 liter per minute. Additionally, in pneumatic system, the double acting cylinder's required amount of air is generally identical in both moving forward or backwards, so it is acceptable to choose the required amount of air calculated when cylinder is moving forward for your convenience. The conditions we used in our example is set for the convenience of calculation. So please note that the actual air consumption and the required air amount can be theoretically different depends on the environment. We have looked at the air consumption and the required air volume so far. 
Was this helpful to understand the pneumatic cylinder? I'll be back with the different pneumatic stories next time. Thank you. Mrs. Momatics is in collaboration with KCC, a specialized Momatics Corporation.